How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the stream. How's everyone keeping? Make sure to say hi in the chat. We're going to be uh, continuing with the Hellboy we were working on two weeks ago. And uh, I did a little bit of work on him since. Uh, I did. Let's have a look on I did a little bit on his jacket. I added like this shawl type thing. I did. I added his fingers and stuff a little bit um, on his big hand. Is what's it called again? Can't remember. Drop it in the chat if you can remember the name of Hellboy's hand. There's a name for it. I can't remember. Life lover, how's it going, buddy? Oh, Yulia, how are you? How are you keeping? Yeah, I did a little bit on his uh, his hands. And so what I'm going to do today is I want to show you how. So now that we've gone through like the pose. And I know, say, something like this will be the angle that will go for like in the final render. Now I'll do some other angles too, but like the main, the main uh, render, let's say, will be at this angle. So I'll show you a little bit now more on what I did and uh, what we're going to do today. So I'll just start off you. Oh, sure, I have to do that. Put that back onto perspective. Something like that. There we go. So, the right hand of Doom. Thanks, MJ Sculpts. Um, right, so, yeah, I, wore, I I did a little bit. I edited this. The chest was flat across, which, when I opened it back up, I actually didn't really like, so I just wanted to break that up a little bit. Um, I cut the uh, hoof part away from his feet. And you can see there, like I just gave it a Z remesh when I cut them off and then extruded that inwards, that edge inwards and the same on the hooves. So there's a little bit of separation there, which we might even smooth back a little bit. But anyway, um, just kind of played around with the size of the hand, um, kind of Worked into these fingers, and all all simple stuff that I was doing in the last stream. I didn't do you know, I didn't do any uh, processes or anything that I hadn't shown you. I really wanted that cup to be really small, to be comically small, just to give him a sense of scale. And yeah, like I said, I added the jacket and I just refined the collar, pulled out the collar and stuff. So, let's hide these. So that's what we're working on underneath. So what I need to do now, so this, this is what I wanted to show you for this stream, because it's a pretty important part of the process, is, as you know, or a lot of you will know, I always work in separate pieces. Uh, break the body up into more essentially simpler forms work on the primary forms primary shapes and then once once they're looking once they're looking the way i want i can refine them so you can see you know once the once the the abdomen was in the general shape i wanted then i could subdivide it and go up I go in and like sculpt in some some abs and stuff. So the next stage now that all these separate pieces are kind of sculpted into is to merge them all together. So to do that, we're just gonna collapse each one, but first a handy trick, just to make sure. Because sometimes uh you'll collapse something and realize that it was on like the second subdivision instead of the fifth for example so if you just hit all high 
in the sub tool palette there. It'll just make sure all the sub tools are at the highest subdivision. And then you just start collapsing them into each other. And then the idea, once you have them together, you can dynamesh them or you can use, um, uh, what do you call it? Remesh by union, uh, it works as well. Depends on the situation. Sometimes I've used, remesh by union can be great. Actually, we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit, the difference between dynamesh and remesh by union, just, so he's, just in case uh, any of us aren't aware. Um, let me see. Um, so you, it's nice to meet you. I checked out the kitten 3D print you talked about in the last stream. And I'd say it's the cutest thing, especially the eyes. I have to make some of all my cats. Yeah, yeah, that was a really fun little sculpt to make. Um, uh, so Life Lover, you're asking there about uh, individual mentorships. Um, it was something I did late last year. And I'd planned to do uh, earlier this year, but just due to other stuff coming up, uh, I'm not doing mentorships at the moment. It is something that I want to do in the future because uh, I do enjoy doing them, but it is something that I will I will pick up again. Um, if you, not to be shameless plugging, but if you do follow me on any of the social medias, I'll post them there. So probably best places is Instagram or Twitter Um, I haven't I always post any any news like that I always post on my Instagram I only started Twitter there recently Um, so if you I'll, I'll, I'll be posting there as well Um, even sometimes I have a blog in my in my art station and for something like that for mentorships I will update the blog uh, post with that kind of thing if I have a uh, when, when it is the, the right time to do it the thing is with mentorships like you, you, you want well personally I, I, I wouldn't want to do it unless I'm all in so you know I don't want to I don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it I want to do it when I, I can commit to it properly and really teach properly and uh, you know give people their money's worth so uh, but yeah if you follow me on any of the social medias uh, hold on I can give you my uh my link tree I'll post a post that here in the chat um all my social media and stuff is on that so you'll be able to get to them there um and yeah anything like that from mentorships to if I'm making a tutorial or anything like that I'll post it there so you can find it there um I'm glad to hear it, Yulia. All right, so let's start collapsing these bad boys. So you've a, you've a couple of options here. So I'll just run through them real quick. So you can just go in and say, you know, like we've got the the chest there. Let's just bring it up to the top for a moment. Isolate so we can see what we're looking at. Oh, I didn't bring the chest up, sorry. So we'll grab, say, even the shoulders and the torso. Or, sorry, the, like the abdomen. Oh, I'm doing this, so we can just. Alt click. All right, so we know these are at the highest subdivisions. So here you can just go merge down. Oh, I have merge down hotkeyed to control and down. So that way I can move things around, but I can also just hit control down and that will merge them. So we're on the top one. So just merge, you can hit always on that. Pull that up. 
So, you see now all of these are in one subtool. So if I hit Dynamesh now, I'll Dynamesh these together and I'll Dynamesh at a high resolution. And that way, these have just become one shell. So, that's, that's one option. The other option is, you go here to Merge Visible. If we just lower the visible count on the subtools, we can see the, the tools up here. So you can see, here's my um, current tool. So if I just Merge Visible, if you watch this tool, it will shift over and in its place, it will leave the the whole sculpt merged together. Now, the handy thing in here is sometimes what can happen is when you're merging everything, you don't realize that one or two of your sub tools are actually dynamic, actually have dynamic subdiv on them instead of actually subdivided. So, and if that's the case, when you merge them, the dynamic subdiv will turn off and you'll see, so you can see here, the legs and the lats are not, uh, don't have high subdivisions. So if I just select them, I will actually need to get the feet in as well. Cool. So I'll we'll mask everything, we'll hide, and then split hidden. Split hidden is down here. Split unmasked, sorry, not split hidden, split masked. Split masked or unmasked, it's basically the same thing, just in reverse. So we can just subdivide those. And lock them back in. Now, oh, this has, you see this has multiple polygroups so I'm just gonna auto group there you go and now just go through and get rid of all these so I'm gonna separate these And by the way, guys, I always say this on every stream, but uh, just in case, because it'd be a bit, I don't want people to be, um, I could play royalty-free music, which is not necessarily always the best, so I tend to just leave it be, play my own music and let you guys, if you want to open another tab and play some music, if you want to listen to it. That way you can play music and still hear my voice rather than me playing music on top. Uh, Pedro from Barcelona. Hey Pedro, thanks for joining buddy. Harry Mandibles is back. I'm never going to forget that name. Thanks Harry Mandibles. I have a good few in today, that's nice. So you can see now what I'm essentially doing is just hiding with control and shift everything that I don't want to be welded together. What is that? That's the tongue. It's another thing, you can see the tongue there, the, the normals were flipped on the tongue, so it was inside out. So I'll know that now when I go back. And I don't want the hooves to be welded in either. And the dynamesh will close these holes. I'll double back off. So I think I'm happy enough.
split. So here we have Hellboy, just just the fleshy bits. That's what we're looking for. And now, so now your choice is the Adina mesh, or do you uh, remesh by union? So remesh by union can be really good because it keeps it keeps the same. It doesn't disturb the topology on each piece. All it changes is where they intersect. It will stitch them together where they intersect, which can be really nice and it can keep your edges really well. Now, the thing is, sometimes because of that process by nature, sometimes you'll still get intersections where things cut through. Now, the point of doing this after I've welded everything together, I'm going to want to smooth out some of these edges. I'm not keeping all these edges. Some of them I want and I'm getting them for free, which is part of the point of this kind of workflow and but some of them i want to smooth out now if i use remesh by union what can happen is you get a, an intersection of meshes and when i what i'm going to do is duplicate the duplicate this mesh once i've welded it together and z remesh it in order to get a lower poly version and then I'm going to subdivide that a couple of times and pr and with that high level of resolution on that duplicate, I can then reproject the detail from the original sculpt onto that. Now, if I do that and there's cut throughs, there's, there's bits of mesh inside and stuff, it tends to just kind of implode on itself because it doesn't know where to go. So that's why I think generally my rule of thumb is if it's simple if it's simple mesh then i can get away with using remesh by union and you can always try it because sometimes it works perfectly and then it's it it's, tends to be even better and sometimes it doesn't quite work and dynamesh is just just ends up working because it's a simpler process it's just everything just gets completely welded together and you're only you're only left with the surface so um we can try We'll try remesh by union. Let's see what happens. And in the meantime, let's see what you guys are saying. Pac-Man East, how's it going, buddy? Um, so Pranil Shatav, I hope I said that right. Uh, when should I re top the model at what stage of the sculpt? So if you want to re -top if you're manually re -topping, it's because either you want to just show that you can re in your portfolio or you plan to have it animated or aka rigged. Uh, well, not the same thing, but you're going to have it rigged for animation. Um, in that case, you wouldn't you wouldn't do this. You would have done it before this stage because I've this is just a sculpt for render. This is not to be animated. So... What you would do is you'd get this to an A pose, not a T pose. So instead of like you see characters pose with their arms straight out, you don't arms at a forty-five degree angle. Uh, tends to be better. Um, and once your car when your character is in that completely neutral pose, you have to completely neutralize the face, which is a, a there's. A learning curve in that too neutralizing a body is not as simple as it sounds uh, it needs to be done correctly um and once that's done and obviously the character is all one piece and um, then you can bring that into whatever software or if you want to do it in zbrush uh, and do your retopo and um, that assuming that you want to do it then um, for something like this I wouldn't ever re -topo this uh, like when I'm doing a sculpt you, you can re the sculpt if you want to do it like just to show it off in your portfolio which is a completely viable thing to do uh, it's very important despite the fact that I know I don't have a uh, topo in my portfolio I mean ideally I really should um, but you know do as I say not as I do 
so it's um not something i would do once i've posed obviously because now you have to do the whole thing asymmetrically and that's not going to work um so you're gonna yeah once once it's in that ace or symmetrical uh, a pose then you can do it and then you can if you want you can go from there and pause and do whatever if you just want to get a render so you can see here so I know this looks different now for any you're not aware this is just because it's showing the true subdivision before it was showing um, the subdivisions now it's just showing the actual resolution of everything uh, and you can see all it's done is stitch the edges so if we do something like this put double on looks like it did a good job which is great Now what I might want to do actually for this particular sculpt is uh, like I thicken everything up like the jacket and stuff and see can I print this guy. Um, okay so now well, I don't really need I don't really need all this. So we will delete that. And just keep this guy. I, I'm gonna do. I'm doing it this way. I showed you. I was telling you the other way is just to merge them in the other, in your sculpt itself. In here, you can just merge down like I did with the body here. Um, so that's like feel free to do it. The reason I'm doing it this way is there can be like I showed you. Like it'll show you if you've got any subdivisions that are dynamic subdivisions, or any meshes that are flipped. Um, and it's also just now I can just isolate this and just show you this process on its own. So we're going to duplicate this mesh. So you can see you have two of the same sub tool. If I was in the other one, I'd hide everything and only have these two because I'm going to reproject now. But first, I'm going to. So I have the. We can show you here in the geometry. Go down to. Ziri mesh. You can see the target poly count. I'm just gonna leave that at five. This can be a bit of trial and error to get like a good level of um, resolution in your topology. But generally, if it was just a head, I'd go lower. Uh, but the fact it's the whole body, I may even have to go higher because we don't want to lose when it's when we when we lower the poly count. We don't want to lower it so much that we lose details like um you know the nostrils and stuff because we're gonna have to subdivide and reproject and if that's the case then it's gonna be you're gonna just make it more difficult for z rush to, to identify the different surfaces so z remesh that alex f1 how's it going buddy nice to see you back um okay here we go here's a here's a here's a question from crike oh sorry well cricket tree away um are there realistic paths to a career in stylized character creation i much prefer stylized over realism but often i'm told more realistic sculpting skills are better for jobs i've never been told that um Maybe in the games industry, that could be true, because the games industry uh, has a lot more realism than the animation industry. Um, but in terms of jobs, overall, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. Um, what is important is you do need to understand real anatomy before you can do stylized. Um, so you can't skip that you do need to do studies and 
figure out realistic anatomy um actual anatomy before you can stylize it because essentially what you're doing is you're taking that knowledge of real anatomy and you're pushing it in certain ways and it never works properly you'll never be able to compete against sculptors who have that knowledge if you don't um because you all you're going to be able to do is stylize things in ways that you've seen other people do it you'll never be able to make your own decisions because you don't have the foundation of anatomy behind you to inform those decisions so um Nandu, hi and good night. Um, so yeah, um, but I wouldn't have said, I personally, it's not my personal experience that there's more jobs for realistic sculptors. Um, especially now, if anything, especially now, because, you know, you have the likes of Unreal who are able to essentially generate characters very simply that are ready ready to go as soon as they're done it's like it's 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 rigged it's got it's any correctives blend shapes uh it's textured everything is ready to go straight out the door so uh, which is great actually for the industry and um yeah, you can see now that's gone a bit low you see because we're losing too much detail there i don't want to lose that much detail um and you know but it, it is great for the industry smaller studios can now make higher fidelity games um because they have that takes away from the time that it t requires to make these things and then at the same time to make characters like that and at the same time um less time means a smaller budget so smaller studios can now afford to make higher fidelity games make those you know realistic shooters or whatever that they want to do um but yeah no i i, I stylize there's a there's there is less it seems to me i don't have any numbers but there is less it seems to me stylized sculptors in the world than there is realistic sculptors um and often you go into games or are you know vfx doing realistic sculpt and oftentimes you're working with scans and you're cleaning scans and in fact that kind of software that uh in uh, unreal are doing are it's kind of negating that too uh well not not necessarily but in a way um not every time but so yeah i i'm personally i would not say if there if there is more jobs in realistic i wouldn't take that route just because there's more jobs in it because uh there's plenty of jobs doing stylized characters you know you don't have to if you want to work at on the top level studios there's not a lot of jobs there because they're the top level but if you just want to work in any studio and you could just plenty of great studios out there that aren't disney and aren't you know uh, epic games and all those top tier companies plenty of fantastic studios to work for that you'll be you know treated well well paid doing really cool work so you know it's a uh, no i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't make a decision on your this is your career so the rest of your life or at least a massive massive chunk on it just based on the fact that there might be more jobs even if that were true which i'm not so sure it is so i hope that helps answer that question Um, hey cena doing well and no problem cricket yeah okay So yeah, like I thought, we're gonna have to go higher. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go to eight and hopefully that'll do it. I don't wanna go too high cause it's a waste. But at the same time, we don't wanna be here all night and you remeshing this thing again and again for you. Um, I can 
sure that's Sha here. Uh, Pac-Man, Wizawat. Uh, Vinit. Very encouraging, thank you. No problem, Kruger. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, I, I, I do have a kind of, I generally have a bit of a more romantic perspective on work, um, which I know is not maybe all, always realistic too, uh, but I always feel like, you know, you should do exactly what you want to do and only what you want to do as much as you can and get get really good at that um, and when you get really really good at that then someone will pay you to do it for them it doesn't always work out that way though I realise that so it's not always the case uh, Cena, I have a question Paul about rig I mean I can answer what I can but I'm, I'm not a rigger but you know if I can help, I will. Um, model 316. I ran a sculpture model shop for a large film television studio. I was always hired technical, proficient artists over stylized model artist can adapt down, but not always the other way. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't find that to be true. I think um, if you have an artist... At a certain level, at a certain, if someone is doing this years and is really good at it and has a very good eye, and you give them style a stylized sketch and ask them to make a three D character of it, then yeah, some can, yeah, some can do a good job, you know, like Rafa Grizzetti for example, his characters are usually more either comic book to realism um, but he can do a stylized character of course um, he's been at this for a long time and he's you know one of the best so yeah uh, to take that as just an extreme example I know you don't have to be Rafa Grizzetti to be able to do that but y y you understand what I'm saying um, but the average sculptor who does realistic sculpt sculpts characters? When you ask them to do stylized, um, from the perspective of a, a character artist who does stylized, they never hit the beats that a good that someone who is used to doing stylized characters does. The difference to me generally is you have a technical artist and then you have the artistic, and regardless, even in stylized, uh, it's the same thing. And you'll find you have, for example, you know, your, your Dylan Ekron, for example, is, a, is, is, is uh, someone who's very artistic. Uh, his stylized sculpts are incredible. And it's the subtleties in the shapes that are really impressive. Um, and and that's often missed. You know, if you show your grandmother a Dylan Ekron sculpt, I'm sure she'll think it's amazing, but she won't be able to appreciate the subtleties in in, in the thought process and what he's doing. Um, and that's what makes it amazing. And part of why he is as good as he is is because he also is a great character designer, and you know draws and designs characters on a regular basis. That is the difference between a high-end stylized sculptor and then just someone who sculpts and is given 2D of a stylized character. Yeah, they can work down, but they're not going to hit that high level. Um, and in my experience, that's every time I've seen that. A, a technical artist cannot hit that high level without a shit ton more art direction involved. Otherwise... Yeah, they just they're, they're because they're not used to it. It's not something that they do all the time. Um, and for me, uh, 
when I'm sitting in an interview hiring new people I much prefer to see as I'm in the animation industry I much prefer to see an artistic sculptor because I can teach them retopo I can teach them how to neutralize a face I can teach them how to pose the character properly for for rigging where to put loops I can teach them that quite quickly I can't teach them the art it, it takes too much time I can't teach them the art so yeah I don't I don't think there's any hard fast rule to this personally but I mean look there's that said I wouldn't knock a technical artist there you need both I think uh, one's not better than the other you need both I'm right, gonna subdivide this a few times This is always the kind of stuff that takes a while to to get right. See, this is why that's a problem. This this is the type of stuff that I can't sit and do. I can't sit and you know go back and forth on a stream. Um, because you know. You guys don't want to sit here and watch me see remesh something again and again. I'm going to try one more time, which is probably one more too many, but we'll have now a chin wag while we're at it. Or will I? Nah, look, we'll live with it. Alright, so. up to 70 the adaptive size is going to make sure if there's a curve it will put more polys there so the higher your adaptive size is the more polys it will put in the more it will adapt the topology to the shape so if there's a lot of detail it will add more topology there if there's not it will, it will have less Um, hey Ryan, doing good, thank you very much. Um, let me see. Thanks for that insight into the industry. Yes, I agree that anatomy is key. Besides, once you get some confidence with it and live figure drawing, it's kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. I love doing anatomy. And I did uh, live figure drawing for years, um, every week. Uh, that was really, really helpful. I'd highly recommend that if any any has ever got the chance or is want to learn more about anatomy, that's a great way to do it. And not only that, but you your, you improve your eye huge, hugely. Um, and just your appreciation for the figure. Uh, I learned so much from uh, figure drawing, so I highly recommend that. And yeah, it is, and and it does because you know it's like a lot of things when you get when you when you work at something you get good at it you always enjoy it, except for UVs. Um, what is your tactic for rigging fingers? So I don't like okay, so seeing it the a. Rigging is a is a whole other, like I can rig a little bit, but I, I I can I can rig as much as I need to to understand what I need to do in a model, 
to hand it to a rigger and for it to work but i'm not i'm not a rigger um so i, do, I generally don't i mean sometimes i'll throw you know a couple of joints into an arm just to test it and make sure things like that are working or if i'm doing like a creature or something like that then i'll, I'll use i'll do something like that just to test that it bends correctly or rotates correctly or whatever but um yeah i will i wouldn't be able to give you any good advice on on rigging on rigging fingers nothing better than you'd find in a decent youtube tutorial um model three wants to certainly and especially if someone has a defined a very defined style that is recognizable yeah that can be that can be really that can be really great uh having a, a very recognizable style can be really help you especially in um you know social media and stuff you become very recognizable for your own artwork and having a big following there can really help um with career opportunities so uh yeah that can be really good that's gonna be a problem but we're just gonna we're gonna have to live with it i think oh it opened the hole well that is not ideal but maybe we can deal with it should we be all right Um, this is what I was hesitant to do this step but I, it's, it's a really important step if you want to follow this kind of workflow but I was hesitant to do this step because this part always takes a while to get it right because it's a bit of trial and error yeah you see but maybe we can just pretend it's not there I can always go back later and We'll just leave it that for now. I can go back later. So I would, I would go back in, and you can. You, there's a couple of things you can do, like when you Z remesh, you can use the, um. Here you got Z remesher guides. You can. Go along and draw out, and tell ZBrush to to send the topology in a certain direction with that. Um, so that's an option. But for now, we'll live with this because I don't want to be doing this all day. But that does require, it will require a bit of trial and error. Um, so let's see. Keep all of you. My tongue is inside out. I found that out earlier. Flip that. Where are you? I know some of you are probably screaming at why don't you group stuff? I hate grouping. When anyone sends me files in work or anything and they've got groups, I just immediately delete them. I like everything to be nice and free. There you go. Sorry, now we've got our dynameshed. Sorry, we used remesh by Union. Oh, Ashley's in. Hey, Ashley. How's she cutting? Ashley's another one of the Pixelogic sculptors. If you haven't seen her work, go and check it out now. Do yourself a favor. She's just badass creatures. And she just kind of does it on the fly on the stream. I don't know how she does it, but. Not a bother on her. Uh, so now, yeah, okay. So see. Okay. 
smooth is at 100%. Right. So I want to smooth here. So this is taking a little while, yeah? Now imagine I have to go through all of this. And also I want the surfaces to blend a little bit better. So now because I have the subdivisions, I can go back down and I can, this one, I know I've talked about it before, but it's like critical. Hold shift to smooth, press down and then lift and you'll do alt smooth. Remember that one and use it. Especially if you're doing, you want to, not even if you're doing stylized, but you just want to maintain a nice curve. But you need to have a lower, you need to have a lower topology. So I'm going to lower this down. And at this point I start going in and just smooth them back where I don't want those edges. How do you make the lines on his cheek with polish and damn standard on his cheek? Oh, these here. Uh, to begin with, I'd say that was probably a separate shape. I don't mesh the head like pff, I don't know, tr three streams ago or something. Uh, so that's um, probably a separate shape that got dynameshed in. I would think. Um, because pulling out a damn standard I have to do a lot of messing to control that shape um, where if I just add in a primitive and pull and push it around in a separate part then it's much easier I have much more control I can do that then I don't have to worry too much about like the back and stuff for now because he's wearing a jacket so we can cheat that a little bit we don't have to get all caught up in every little bit sometimes I kind of do just even though I know I'm putting clothes on a character I'll just work on the topology or sorry I'll work on the anatomy um, it's more just to keep myself practicing anatomy but with this guy I don't need, I'm not gonna do it so much because I'm working actually this is one of the two sculpts that I'm working on at the moment so my time is somewhat precious for now um, just chilling nice you doing some sculpting um, I thought I missed oh okay Jeffrey Esmeral my favourite artist love your work Paul any tips on sculpting scholars bodies and how did you pursue it with the gangster model that you did with the blend shapes inspired by your work, man? Thanks very much, Jeffrey. That's that's lovely. Um, I'm glad to hear it. Um, uh, any tips on sculpting stylized bodies? Um, well, what I'm showing you here you know keeping keeping shapes separate to begin with so you can focus on the the big forms focus on um, where the where you get plane changes and keeping your curves nice and keeping it 
making sure you keep your subdivision level so you can keep it a low poly because it means you see like if I pull this out start messing with it so if I go up to the top if I'm up here right say this is a dynamesh so it's super high res and I want to get this like this nice and smooth which is part of the stylized character right I want to get this nice and smooth so I'll use my all smooth it's I can do this all day it's never gonna go the way I want it I go to the low subdivision you see that's the point that's why you need subdivisions so there's a there's a little pro tip now you can see as I go up to subdivisions it's still a bit of bump that's not that's not a problem so I'll keep that smooth go up a subdivision smell it there just go up a few subdivisions and just like I showed you shift press down on the pen lift shift and you'll all smooth and it just averages out the surface so you can get your uh, your clean shape back and here I can just go down On my own subdiv tree, and I can control the uh, where I want to keep the pinches. So, like, I want to keep those edges in certain places, get rid of them in others, and then once I smooth this, I can, if I want anywhere, I can go in and sculpt into it more and refine it further. Easy, easy peasy, you might say. Um, great riggers are always in demand that is very true a great rigger is a dime a dozen no way that's the wrong way around right I'm using that phrase the wrong way around great riggers are very hard to find because uh, it's not a field that a lot of people tend to fall into you know a lot of people tend to you know, want to be 2D artists or sculptors or even great lighter, uh, great lighter. To try and numb my accent there to make sure you understand what I'm saying there. Uh, great lighter is also really important and can be hard to come across. Um, but yeah. As a modeler, as a character modeler, um. When you get to work with a really good rigger it is just fantastic you actually as if as a character sculptor working in the industry as a character modeler you can learn you can learn a lot from it and you should uh, if you have a really good rigger or just you know even a decent rigger um, you should make sure and learn as much as you possibly can from them because it's uh, you know that's what that's who you're serving to as much as to a texture artist you need to have topology that they can uv fine but that's not nearly as difficult as uh what you need to supply to a rigger that's that's the really that's that's the bigger much bigger learning curve and uh oops how do i do that again look i can just go down some division levels and fix it don't know when i did that um like a bungee was probably seeing that and like ah oh, what have you done wouldn't oh, find um yeah I love working with a good rigger I've, I'm working with a good rigger at the moment and even for example for any of you guys who are working as character modelers currently like I'm working with a rigger at the moment uh, now I've, I've worked with plenty of great riggers, uh, but I'm I'm working with a rigger at the moment. A really good guy, Damien. Um, and uh, I I started late last year in a new studio, and with that rigger, the two of us managed to put our heads together and come up with a new system for uh, doing the blend shapes for the characters. That ended up meaning half the amount of work for both of us with a bigger output 
so more blend shapes at a higher fidelity um, and I couldn't have done that without a good rigger you know what I mean I couldn't have made that on my own I need, I need the rigger so yeah could not agree more hats off to all great riggers all riggers in general except for when they give you notes <laughs> no. it's a uh, yeah it's super super important um, I can't keep up with you um, let me see I'm new to uh, the whole tree. Uh, uh, sorry, okay. uh, Ali. Hi, I'm new to the whole 3D world right now and I'm working on ZBrush for sculpting, but should I learn Maya or Blender for retopo and animation? It's up to you. Um, I'd say, it, well, you want to work in the industry, so yeah, I, I, I definitely, you know, um, Maya tends to be the pipeline tool that, that studios use, so yeah, that's, I'd say, go, go with Maya. Uh, Blender is great too, but go with my for now. That'd be my two cents. There's not a lot of studios using Blender. Um, but like I said before, personally, I would say make sure you can uh, actually sculpt a decent level and that's all ZBrush ZBrush is the fun one I can feel the anger <laughs> uh, how do you make oh no sorry yeah yeah I got that one um, what's easier for... am I getting really dark nah, that's okay um, oh, what brush am I using? Uh, so at the, at the moment I'm just using this smooth, which is just holding shift, and it smooths. Um, people have said that to me a bunch of times to get my brush in the UI, but I like having a big space. I don't like having my UI, and it the the, the brush is like a big square, and it immediately takes like half an inch off. The entire screen no matter where i put it it'll immediately take a half an inch off the thing which is kind of annoying so i don't um i don't ever keep it on my ui i guarantee you a lot of you won't any anyone new to, to zbrush i know some people do but anyone new to zbrush the majority of people that i know that are working in zbrush for a while uh, you know when you get used to it you make your own ui generally no one ever includes anything that's here on the ui or a lot of people that i know i'll say that much i won't, I won't speak I'll, i'm not speaking for everybody of course because you just uh we don't need it but i realize for the stream it will be nice for some use but um like I always say, I, I use like five brushes and they're all standard brushes. I didn't download anything fancy. I do have some brushes there, uh, but I never use them. I used to use the Orb Crack brushes a little bit. They're quite good. Google them if, you, if you're looking for any new brushes. But uh, yeah. That's that's about the law. If I need something, you know, like I need a, a feather or a scale or whatever, I generally just make it myself. Because I, you know, I, I don't really like to be using someone else's model in my work. Generally speaking. 
unless it's something very very generic but even then if it's very generic it's usually easy to make so we're starting to get there now so we're on the highest subdivision just cleaning up these so you can see this takes a little time to get through but it's all part of the process just put on some music and go in and and be careful don't just go in and smooth every edge <clears throat> um what you're looking for is obviously stuff like this we, we want to smooth that that's, that's not the um, but you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna completely smooth like I don't wanna smooth this edge. I don't wanna over smooth the the abs. What I do want to do is generally I want to touch on them a little bit because I don't see this, see? this sharpness just to take that sharpness out of it. That's better now. Hope you can see the the difference there in the stream. Um. And even I, I could do that and then just go down two subdivisions and just touch it with the the inflate brush there is still better than that kind of uh, harsh line that is left behind from uh, remesh by union or dynamesh. Uh, so you know you want to you want to go in and refine them, and it, it's really just you know with stuff like that it's just tapping it with the with the or with the smooth just to help pull it back let's unhide some of these oh I already had that on so um want to do the fun stuff yeah exactly well see the thing is rigging rigging can be fun but you kind of have to get into it before you kind of realize i suppose a lot of people kind of have to get into it before they realize it, that it you know it, it's interesting it could be interesting and it, it's that problem solving mentality i think um that's that's present in all good riggers And 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 good modelers too. Um Okay, I have sculpture that I painted just colours on ZBrush. I want to export that for my friend to animate in Cinema 4D. How do I do that correctly? Um, so if you've painted with poly paint, what you'll need to do is, and ideally you'll need to get, you'll, you'll want to have subdivisions too, because you'll want to go to the lowest subdivision. I don't know if your model has UVs or not, if it doesn't, I assume if you want to animate it, it's got, it's retoppled. If it's not UV'd, you can auto UV here, but unwrap, um, just by clicking unwrap here. Um, once that's done, if it's not, if it's already UV, then you can obviously skip that. Uh, and then once once it's unwrapped, you can um, go into the multi map exporter. And you can see texture from poly paint here. So if you just turn that on, you won't need displacement. You have other options here too, like a normal map. Uh, cavity maps on but a uh, texture from poly paint will get that color and it will export the maps that you need and then you'll need to send them the model and you need to send them the maps or you need to put that together yourself and, and give it to them uh, with the with the 
with the, the maps plugged into the shader. So that's a whole, that's all I can kind of show you here. It's a whole tutorial in itself almost. Um, ZBrush free. Uh, this version of ZBrush is not free. Uh, this is like the highest level of uh, the, the highest grade software or version of ZBrush. Um, you have uh, ZBrush Core Mini is free. And uh, that's a lot of fun to play around with. So um, you can actually, there's a bunch of the streams on the Pixelogic channel. Uh, that you can watch and uh, recently um, a bunch of the artists, a bunch of the other streamers did uh, sculpts in ZBrush Core Mini so uh, if you're interested in trying that out definitely check them out because you've got a bunch of like top level artists working away in ZBrush Core Mini, you can see what it's capable of So another thing to keep things clean, see if I go up with, the, I'm using the Damien standard brush now. So say I want to go in and refine these abs and I do this. You know, what's happening there is we're getting this dip and then that valley. So if I come back out and I use a bigger brush, I just, make the size of the scale of the brush up a bit higher oh sorry and bring the z intensity down and rather than one slightly go into it oh good my dog has figured out how to open the door. He's realized if he applies enough pressure to it, he can open the door. So every now and again, the door will just pop open. And any wonders. Right. Come on. Boomer. Come here. Come here, say hi to everyone. Come here. Say hi to everyone. This is Bilmer. Keeps me company when I scope, don't you? There you go. Good. And here's paws on the floor. You can imagine how annoying that is when you're trying to sleep. He's tap dancing around the room. Um, yeah, so now, so you get a much more gradual, and it kind of pinches slightly as it's uh, cutting in. So you get a better result. You don't get that. You don't get this really harsh. And that stuff matters, because really, you know, that's why it can be it can be quite important what material you use. You don't want to use a material that's like overly has too much like specular and stuff, or is weirdly shiny, you know, some gold material or something like that. Because you want to be able to see how the light is uh, affecting your model. So you can see, it, I'm quite light with it. And that's because I want to vary. I don't want just, I don't want like these like defined things like this, you know? It's not natural. I want to vary the, uh, the edges. 
so that they're not all the same because they're not all the same in the in reality and so you can see there going in putting them in and then using the all smooth dropping the subdivision using the all smooth to go back in strongman type abs and here you've got the ser uh, serratus minor and people sometimes if you're not familiar enough with anatomy will think that these are ribs but they're actually muscles I don't want to overdo these. Because I don't want them to look. I don't want them to. I want them to have that. A bit of that. Um, I don't want them to look ripped. I just want them to look huge. And there is a difference. See, that's after getting a little bit lumpy. I think actually just. Serves the purpose a little bit better. In fact, there's a jacket sitting over it, so. But anyway, yeah, mate, don't skimp on your serratus minor. Absolute wizards, yep, hundred percent. Um, is there any way to get usable the topo out of zero measure? Uh, is there any way to get usable the topo out of zero measure? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, there's ways you can do it with like um, poly groups and. Um, that's that's a whole thing to itself. So you you can you can essentially like, for example, you want the loop to go around the eye, so you can you know mask around the eye, make that a poly group, so on, and um, then tell Z remesh to follow the loops. Um, there's there's a bunch of videos it take me too long to go through the through it here. I don't want to keep Zero mentioning this guy. Uh, but there is a bunch of uh, YouTube videos on that. So it's it's really easy to find and they're not super long or anything. Uh, so you can give that one a a Google and you'll find it pretty handy. There's loads of information on that. A few days ago, I watched a ZBrush Masters vid and mentioned you would like to do some of the Gargoyles TV show. You're planning to do them soon. I'd actually forgotten about that. That I do want to do them. Um, well, at the moment, I'm working on um, my own, a couple of sculpts that I'm, or I'm working on a, a particular sculpt at the moment. And I'm doing a few other new things. I learned a few new things for it. Um, so I'm just kind of enjoying that, um, working on this guy, and 
what I want to do at the moment is hopefully go back and continue one of the I think the first character uh, I ever worked on on the Pixelogic streams was uh, Reverend Green from Pluto I'd redesigned them I'd done a bunch of my own designs for the for those characters for the Pluto or Clue I think in America is called just called Clue here it's called Pluto um, characters so those I start. I did the force one, and I did the renders, and I did all that stuff, and finished them. Um, but I didn't continue on with the other characters, so I, I need to go back and because uh, I, I something that's actually really good to have in your portfolio is a series, like a consistent series. Um. So I want to go back and actually continue on with them maybe do Colonel mustard next or something but i still yeah at some stage i'd like to go back i'd like to get into do and do those uh the gargoyles yeah i loved that show as a kid i rewatched it not long ago i probably said that on the on the stream on the mast on the zebra master screen that was a fun stream i enjoyed doing that um Oh, there's loads of messages, okay. Um, I'm sh okay. Um, Edward Mortier, cool name. Um, started out, but I am starting out, but most of my models, when I sculpt them, seem too chaotic. I'm trying to do more stylized stuff. Um, all right. Well, definitely, like I was saying before, working in parts, keeping have your subdivisions, so you have low subdivision levels as well, uh, is definitely really helpful. So um, that will... You'll, you'll have more control i assume when you say chaotic chaotic you're kind of losing control of of you can't quite get what you're trying to sculpt the way you want it uh that will help um i keep saying i keep meaning to do a tutorial that'll just concisely put it all in one place but you know across a couple of my streams the actually the the ZBrush Master stream is on Pixelogic's channel and I kind of go step by step through the process that I do and that might help um, because it's very much, the process is very much tailored to hold control of your shapes. Um, and that can often make the biggest difference is just having a good workflow and understanding you know how to get a particular shape the way you want it again like the the subtleties in the shapes that you want I just want to take the pun just smoothing that chest back a little bit. Because right now it's just looking, it's too sharp. But I feel it's a bit too sharp, so I just want to pull it back and get a. So it doesn't look too separated from the body. the rest of the body
uh, speaking of that there's been a bunch of people that are writing to me on uh, Instagram and tagging me on stuff where they're using these streams as like a, like a tutorial which is a uh, really cool because I never really expected them to be used that way but people are just following along like someone did it that the, this head so did that turkey thing that I did last Thanksgiving that's great to see it's really nice it's nice that uh, people are finding it useful Shouldn't the shoulders be more slumped? No, not necessarily. What makes you say that? Um, rigging is something I want to do, but I've only had one class for that. Wish they offered more in-depth classes where I am. Um, well, you don't have to do it locally anymore. It's the beauty of the internet. Of the internet. You can take an online course. Courses for everything nowadays. Just gotta look. I would say that would be my suggestion. He needs pantalones. Thank you, Tomas. Or, okay. New one is Ebush. I don't know if I should learn more about that. I don't know if I should learn more about that. Um, What Mac app are you using and when do you change it when blocking your character and sculpting and if you can share what was your favorite project to work on? Uh, so these are the Zebro Clayse. So you try that into Google, you'll find them. Um, and then I use this, the Zebro Paint. If I'm doing poly paint in uh, ZBrush, I'll paint on that. I think you can see it there. I oh, know this isn't anymore. Well, it was like something like that. Um, if I'm using, if I'm doing that, then I'll do it because obviously, if you do it on top of that, <coughs> the the material is affecting it. So, this is just a clean kind of canvas, if you like, uh, a clean material. That if I do want to, um, I, I I'll often start by poly painting, and then. Um, export the textures and go from there but um, so that's the materials that I'm using um, and oh my favourite thing I've worked on Whew. I I don't know to be honest I, I'm so I work for a studio called Giant it's uh, in Ireland where I live um, it's actually was started um, a good few years ago now by a bunch of guys that went to the same college as me and uh, went out and started their own thing and are doing a, a, an incredible job Um and actually it's i just started working there like i said uh, late last year and i i really love the projects that they pick so i'm really enjoying everything i'm working on in giant 
but I'm working on them right now so they're not out yet so I can't tell you <laughs> what they are um yeah the, then there's like one or two I can think of that I also enjoyed working on but again they're not out yet so I can't say um I did a little bit of work with Epic Games. That was that was fun. That was really cool. I got to work with Matt Torp. Um, I'm a big fan of his work. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, and the other one I was thinking of was like it was a Netflix film, but it hasn't been done. It hasn't been released yet, so I can't say. Uh, yeah. Um, but for me, like I love, like personal work is where it's at for me. That's, like I, I, I love working for a studio and I love being part of something bigger than myself. You know what I mean? I love to be part of like, uh, I love being part of something that does really well and lots of people see and love and like, you, you get, you, you know, like I got to, I made that character that so many people love. Um, You know, seeing a kid playing with the toy of a character you made, that kind of thing. Um, like that's that's kind of why I do it. Work for studios, that is. Um, as opposed to getting into teaching or whatever. But in terms of just like, I just, I love sculpting and I love uh, now and over over the years now I've learned to love you know. Uh, texturing and lighting and stuff as well. Um, so, so we're giving him pattern on this. Yeah, that. So yeah, I can't actually really tell you my favorite ones, but I would say definitely my my favorite stuff generally to do is just to sculpt my own characters um, I'd be interested to know if any of you guys have worked on anything cool let me know in the in the chat um, would love if you did a tutorial on how you shade your characters. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's actually you know what, I'm gonna write that down. Take note of that. And you know what? I wouldn't even like I'm not a lighting artist, so I wouldn't have the neck to go make a tutorial and ask us to pay for it for something like that. I'll just show you how I do my render in like a step by step on YouTube or something like that. Or something free, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't charge us for that kind of thing. Um I do find and relax the muscles of the right shoulder versus the eye train. Thanks, Derek. Uh Life finds a way. <laughs> yeah, Boomer finds a way. Um, oh, he puppy. He's actually like super old. Well, I don't know what age he is necessarily because um, he was found on the side of a motorway, so like I don't know exactly what age he is. Um, but he's getting on. He just has a very um, baby face. All right, so just make a mask there. If he's going to under sub tool and extract and hit, well, here you can say how thick you want it to be, so we probably don't want to go down a little bit. So that's you can see there the mesh is after popping out, so you just say accept. And I don't want both sides, I just want the other side because I'm gonna just so I'm just shift clicking on that poly group now, our poly group, and I've deleted hidden, and now I can. Z remesh. Um, 
Raul hates me. It looks so easy. <laughs> it's just, you know, I've been doing it, I don't know, years now, so uh, it'll look easy when you do it for as long. And, well, assuming you do it regularly. Mileage, that's what it is. I've got a lot of mileage. Uh, will you be 3D printing this? Yeah, I'd like to, yeah. Um, I would like to 3D print this. Could be a fun one. Um, Gargoyles was the best. It really was. Such a good show. It's one of those ones that I went back on hoping it wouldn't disappoint me you know what i mean i didn't just remember it fondly for like nostalgic reasons and when i rewatched it it did not disappoint such a good show you have a bit of a little crotch there going on pocket rocket you know what I mean you know what I'm saying um, can't wait to see you work at joint yeah thanks and um, yeah, we're working on some really, really cool stuff. Pitching for some really cool stuff. Some really, really cool stuff. One in particular that I am like... Fingers crossed we get to do. Again, I can't obviously tell you anything about these, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, some really exciting stuff. And uh, I'm working on a really cool thing at the moment, too. Which is nice, you know. Makes getting up in the morning a bit nicer. Um, stop teasing. I will find out eventually. Anything that I'll, anything, <coughs> anything that I'll do. That releases, I'll always post it on my uh, social media. Show off all the hard work from all the guys. How did I make the coat? Um, I made the coat by extracting, like I did with the trousers. Same way I did the trousers. I extracted a mesh just up near the shoulders and then pulled it down uh, around the arms and up around the chest kind of area and then pulled the whole thing down and just remeshed it and then used um, I used um, the Z modeler to like pull things out, cut, cut things add edges, take edges out so on and so forth, collapse edges That's the kind of thing that is like th see like this like this is awful topology for like what they are it's it's not but it, it's not symmetrical it doesn't really matter for this particular thing because it doesn't need to be like that it doesn't need to be rigged or anything like that so um what kind of Need more reference for Hellboy's shorts. Because there's a lot of like Mike Magnolia's. Stuff, they're essentially just black.
Um, love your accent and sculpting tick tips and techniques too. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Uh, I think Hellboy is supposed to be in his mid forties. Huh. Yeah, what? Wouldn't he be older? Yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, how, hey, Sean. Um, I'm gonna love to have that excited feeling about going to work. Yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, it, it is. It is great, and you will, man. It, it's a matter of time. You just push. Make just make sure and push. Like I was twenty, I was I was, uh, like I finished college when I was like twenty. And I didn't start in the industry till I was twenty six. So there was a gap there where I was like that, like oh, I just want to open the industry and so on. And you know, I was like giving up hope and all that kind of stuff. Um. Now, that said, I was only I had only applied to studios within Ireland, of which there are not many at all less for me to apply for than that's then fingers on my hand so um that's really why you know what i mean if i was applying interna internationally then i'd have gotten a job earlier for sure but um yeah i i mean you're as good and better than sculptors that i've worked in a studio with so uh, there's no reason why you can't and uh, what I always kind of told myself before I started in the industry uh, that kept me going was you know that phrase throw enough muck at a wall until eventually something sticks you know what I mean It's you just keep going at it you're gonna get it eventually um, and hopefully sooner rather than later because you definitely deserve it and uh, you'll find, as I did, when you do start in a studio for the first time, hopefully you'll be working with some good artists and you will learn tons. There is no part of my life where I learned as, where I, I like skilled up as much as when I first started in the industry. Like I, I'm a different artist for it. Before I started working in the industry, I was doing, I was doing some stylized stuff, but I was doing also doing much more, like, um, you know, I was doing arcs and you know all the classic ZBrush Someone starting out in ZBrush stuff, um, so. And then once once I got into the industry, yeah, that was when I really started to to understand how to do this thing. I was working with like really really talented people. I was I was lucky to be working with those boys. I've mentioned them on a bunch of streams now at this stage. So yeah, stick to it, man. So I'm duplicating that jacket. Why do I want to do this? Oh, I, don't want to do that. I want to add maybe a fluff thing to the to the collar. I think.
It's to be you. Oh, sorry. So I'm gonna using the Z modeler over the polygons. I like delete. I like poly loop. Delete all that. And whoops. This is cut off from the jacket itself, so if I auto group, I get just the color. Like magic. So now, same again except extrude all polygons and I'm just going to pull it slightly off it a little bit because I want to be able to see the jacket the edges of the jacket like it's you know sold to the top of it Free ZBrush. Uh, if you go to pixelogic.com, uh, put in um, oh. zbrushcar.com. Oh, I'm going to send you the link here. There you go, I just dropped it in the, if you go to that link that I just dropped in the stream there, in the chat, sorry, uh, you'll be able to get it there. Just download it and start sculpting. So you can, there's a ZBrush Car Mini, then ZBrush Car is like the... Uh, middle of the road package and obviously that comes with more features and stuff then and then <clears throat> then you know you got your full ZBrush that you see me using here it can be a nice way I was saying this I think last week it's gonna be a nice way to progress because you get used to you know you get to experience ZBrush and hopefully you enjoy it um, and like I said, you've got the streams on the Pixlogic YouTube channel showing ZBrush Car Mini and a bunch of the guys did some really cool sculpts in it so you can see what it's capable of. And then, you know, uh, assuming that you enjoy it and you enjoy it sculpting, uh, you can move up then to ZBrush Car. And now you've got like a bunch of the features down and it's in an easy to digest package and you're kind of getting used to it and then you get ZBrush Car Mini and then you get a little bit more um, and you know again you can digest now the, the new parts the, the newer tool the, the other tools that you get in that package and eventually if you do really get into it and you want to you know pursue a further you can get the full pack the full the full ZBrush and you'll you'll already know all the fundamental parts of ZBrush and you can expand it from there so it's a, it's a great uh, kind of way to progress. Now, 
so what I want to do is I want to round off this thing but I don't want to just inflate everything so what I'll do is I'll just mask edge loop complete mask this loop flip it and inflate it this is inside out yeah flip as you can see it there if I the mask what I'm doing soon So now, you see here I'm getting, what I want to do is, I want to pay attention to these kind of shapes. So let me show you what I mean. So yeah, the color is sitting around his head, that's fine. So technically it's fine. But what I want to look for a nice line So it's not just about the color being in there and that's something that's super important and really is um, the difference between really good stylized character modelers and you know the more beginner is you won't just put something in and then kind of forget about it. You know, you want to go in and check your shapes all the time. You know, keeping your, your curves smooth where you need them. Keeping your edges where you need them. The way you would have drawn. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just wobbly line throw something in there. If it was drawn, I'd make a stroke, an intentional stroke there. It's, uh, it's the same principles. So the same artistic principles that apply to, to sculpt and apply or apply to draw and apply to sculpting so if you draw and you're starting out in ZBrush you've got a head start because you'll have a bunch of those fundamental things you've practiced them a lot that's not to say now if you haven't you know, I know I've worked uh, with a bunch of character modelers that never drew, they were never into drawing, they just got straight into sculpting and they're amazing sculptors. It's not, it's not a mandatory thing by any means, but it is a bit of a head start if you're starting in, uh, if you're starting in ZBrush and it, it definitely is beneficial. Again, Dylan Eckerd being a good example of that. 
uh, Matt Thorp that I mentioned earlier have been another good example of that. Sound side colour. That's the big question. So what is ZBrush? Um, so ZBrush is a, a sculpting software. So uh, an alternative to clay, a digital, the digital version of uh, clay sculpting. Um, so you can see it's got brushes that are there to mimic like you know Damien standard could be considered the same way you would use like a knife to cut in um, you know you got clay build up or B C for clay and then B for build up I can draw out the way you would like apply you put straps of clay down and build up um build up the volume and then you smooth it back you, you know you put with water or whatever you can smooth it back or just the heat in your hands you can smooth it out um so that's what zbrush is so that's another thing if you're your clay sculptor you'll definitely have a, a head start let's get a strapper on this fella let's hide this for a moment now does that follow all the way around it does cool i'll use that so rather than using the strap brush which i could also do to go around that was a bit too big but you, you know you know what I mean oh. we could do that and draw a strap around the waist but I've already got perfectly good uh, poly loop there that I can use so we'll duplicate those trousers and if I go to uh, poly loop poly group sorry poly loop group that and now I've control shift click on the trousers so I've taken that polygroup and I'll flip it until that's the only one left and the leaf hidden and now into place I can even try to see if this lower it a little bit no, it gives it a bit more so you know we won't need that um, one question do you use a base mesh for correct topology sometimes more so in work um, more so in production work um, it can be handy to speed things up uh, that said I from my own work especially and sometimes also in, in production work I won't uh, because I find the base mesh will actually influence the decisions that I make uh, like artistically the decisions that I make uh, I find if I start with primitives um, it really forces my brain to pay attention to the to the forms and the silhouette more um so that's why i for that stuff like for this guy i didn't use a, a base mesh um for pretty much any uh, actually there's nothing in my portfolio if you went to my art station to look at my portfolio there's nothing in there that was ever made with a base mesh um but that said base mesh starting with a base mesh base mesh is a viable thing to do 
uh, but I do find it, it, it does influence and it, it takes away something that's really important to me is enjoying the process of sculpting and using a base mesh is is a shortcut really um, you know I like making everything from scratch I enjoy the process of making the character and the base mesh is like you know doing, getting some of the work done for you just noticed some lines there I didn't clean up just slap that all over Not that they matter too much, they're on the back of the arms which have sleeves on them. So now unfortunate so you can see there how I did that pull that up and in a little bit and I'm just using project which is here which is snapping it to the body so I'm getting the same you know it's following the body then and then I can even just inflate and now I've got a belt that's wrapped to the body Control that and a big brush. And add like the detail from there. Does I the uh, what I would encourage is the more tools you understand in ZBrush, the more ways. Like another way I could have done that, like a biz here's a, just for example, a bizarre way I could have done that, is to select a body, um, duplicate it, grab the slice curve, go through it there, go through it there. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. We don't need five subdivisions, true will do. Go through it there. What's wrong? Delete and freeze subdivisions. Oh, sorry. Um bring sub Z remesh all the way down. Z remesh it. There you go. And go in and just use the Z modeler. Delete that. Oh, sorry. Delete the insert. Delete that edge loop. Inflate that. You see what I mean? And um, once I have that in place, I can just extrude it. And the the that's another thing. There's another tip. Uh, rather than working in with thickness with a with a with a, a, a mesh, work with a plane, and that way, with the clothes specifically, especially, but anything that it, that, that the principle applies to of, you know, work with a plane, get it into the shape you want. You've less messing around to do, um, because there's less polys involved, and then once you're done and you're happy with the shape, just extrude it, and that way you get you get a consistent thickness all the way around which is you know the way it should be so anyway don't need that anymore and then the nice thing so here for example mask edge loop complete select that or dynamic thickness to preview as well as uh, rabid 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 evil is saying there that's a uh, another thing you can do yeah uh, 
Um, cool, no problem. Uh, Neuverdell, thanks for joining, buddy. Catch you next time. So now I've because I masked with the Z modeler. I just tap to flip the mask. Control tap to flip the mask. So and now I can put it exactly where I want to. That's a lot easier. And this way, especially because it's low poly. Extrude. But first, I can add in some support loops. Sorry, that's insert. Not insert. Insert loops there, there, and there. Extrude. Now I can get a much cleaner mesh because I can control the amount of polys. And you could even go in, which I probably would, to be honest. Get rid of that for a sec. Go in with the Z modeler. Insert and just Alt with insert selected. Go in delete every second edge loop. Don't need that many. easier again so just to show you a couple ways of doing that kind of stuff like clothing and straps and belts and to add in I'm gonna add in his um, rosary beads because um, that's a narrative thing so I thought that'd be good to have in there uh, rosary beads and like maybe like a pouch I don't know whether to do a pouch probably a pouch because it wouldn't really make sense for him to have he's out for a smoke he's not gonna have a big Oh no, I don't know. I don't know whether to do the gun thing. This the the holster. We'll see. See how I go. Um So, I want to actually, I'd love to do a little, I don't know, maybe bring that cup around somehow with a little, uh, I don't know whether to try to see, can I display that cup a bit better and have like, you know, like a Batman or Superman or something like that on it, I don't know. But anyway, you get the idea, there's still plenty to do there because you can imagine once I go in and refine like the jacket, the belts on the jacket the wrinkles in the jacket and um, the detailing on the, the like rock detailing on his, his uh, right hand of doom and um, all that all that good stuff add the stuff to the belt so it should be quite cool it should be a lot of fun so yeah the big takeaway is alt smooth on low poly have 
lower subdivision levels and all smooth that's the key to being able to keep your shapes clean um possibly the most important part so and then your like i showed you earlier your dynamesh and you dynamesh everything together and you duplicate it is your next step once it's all dynameshed and you z remesh your duplicate and then once that's z remesh that is now your essentially your first subdivision level and then you just subdivide three four five times whatever you need to do and then you can reproject and now you've got your the same exact sculpt except it's now got all your subdivision levels so that's how you do that and that way you can go back and use your alt smooth so you can keep your shapes looking good um so yeah hope you enjoyed it guys uh if you if there's any questions i missed throw them into the comments and uh someone will try to get back to you then after the fact and if you liked the stream make sure you know like uh like the video make sure so we know that you know it's going in the direction that he's like um feel free to leave any feedback or anything like that in the comments too so any suggestions um and subscribe as well uh to keep on track and you can watch you can continue to watch the the process of going through hellboy and other characters and all the other artists doing their stuff too they're all amazing so uh yeah so i hope you've enjoyed it guys and always a pleasure as always nice to see the chat is buzzing tonight which is great it's always a pleasure to chat to you guys uh so thanks for joining and uh, i'll see you again in two weeks uh wednesday 